We're looking here at Jacob's Algebra, and we are in Chapter 13, um, Lesson 2, where we're talking about uh, polynomial functions and uh, just some examples of what's going on here. The book may be a little confusing at times, but these are some fairly simple questions. Uh, we're going to look at something in exercise set 3. It Maybe it's more complicated than some of the other ones, but we have this equation here that's y equals 3x minus 4. So this is what this is what's given in the book, uh, the uh, y equals 3x minus 4. And in its first question is what is its degree? Now uh, this confuses people sometimes, but notice the, the exponent up here above the x there, in some of the equations, you're going to see something that looks like uh, it's going to well, let's get a get a pen here. It's going to be something like 2x squared minus 5. You know, da da da. It doesn't matter. That is the degree, that highest exponent, and and we won't get anything more complicated than that right now. But um, but the highest exponent is the degree, and in generally speaking, for what we're doing in algebra one, you're only going to see an x, and you can order it by the biggest number of x. So I could have 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared, something like that. Anyway, that's the degree, the highest number. Simple enough. And so that's the degree is, no, is 1. And with that information, we also know because it's a degree of 1 based upon the chapter, and the chapter only talks about two things, and that is if the degree is 1 or if the degree is 2. Uh, and uh, and the degree is 1, it's called a linear equation. If the degree is 2, it's called a quadratic equation. Uh, now, this seems a little insignificant here, but I'm, I'm just going to throw a point in for you that if it's a, this degree tells you how many directions things go. Now, is that confusing? Uh, for instance, if it's a, if it's a degree of 1, and let's pretend I have a graph over here. So I'm going to just do a quick sketch of a graph. It's not going to be very pretty. But it's if, if, it's, if it's a degree of 1, and it looks like this, we call it a linear equation, like we just said, which means it's going to look something like this. It's going to be a straight line. Now, it may be that, or it may be this, you know, whatever the case is. It's either going up or going down, but it's on one direction only. In other words, it always increases, or it all, as, as x gets bigger, the, the y value always increases or always decreases. We call this a linear function. We're used to that. Yeah. You know, we, we think about lots of things that happen in, in that way. Um, you know, as you, as you increase the uh, electricity or you increase the knob on a stove, the, temperature, as the, the bigger the number is on the stove setting, the bigger the temperature is. Um, that's a, what we call a linear equation. On the other one, if the degree was 2, I'm drawing another little graph over here. If the degree was 2, we're going to expect two directions. And that means it's going to go something like this, where it's in, in the up direction and then the down direction. Or it may actually go, you know, the other way around. It may go this, like this, and be. So it looks like either it's a cup, you know, upside down or right side up. And those are called quadratic equations. So by the degree of a function up here, and this is this when you start to do the ACT and the SATs and exams, this is one of their trick things. They'll ask you, they'll throw a little graph on there and say what's its equation, and you can immediately count how many directions. Well this goes in two directions, so it has to be the equation that's a degree of two. Just little tricks. But that's that little hint right there tells you what's going to look like. This guy right here, we can just tell immediately that he's a line. And he's so that means he's and he has a degree 1, he's linear, it's going to form a line. Now, the rest of the problem is uh, what the author is doing is he's left all the, you know, he's given us all the numbers at the top here, and he's all this stuff right here that I'm going to just draw a quick box around this. These are the, this is what he's left blank and uh, what I filled in. Uh, so pretend that's not there for a minute. What he says is, what this means is if x is equal to minus 3, y is equal to minus 13. So how do we know that? Let's plug in a minus 3. So let's take minus 3. Minus 3 times 3 is going to give us minus 9. Minus 9 minus 4 is going to give us minus 13. So there's the y value. So everything on the x side gives the y side. Same thing. Okay, well let's plug in a minus 2. So minus 2 is gives me minus 6 here. Minus 6 minus the, that gives me a minus 10 and so on and so forth. If I plug in a minus 1, I get minus 3, 
uh, and, and a minus 4, which gives me minus 7, and so on and so forth. That's how I get these numbers here. Now, that's that should be straightforward enough, and, and I have seen some people, what they do is they get confused. How do you translate that? Because the last part is to graph this, and first of all, make sure you, you set up your scale and your graph. So I've left that blank here, so let's go over to my graph, and I'm going to draw my little arrow there and a little arrow there just to indicate this, and this is going to be the x direction, and this is going to be the y direction. And the first thing I have to do is look up, okay, what's the scale of the graph? The, the x values, I'm going to go from minus 3 to 3. So, well, let's say, I'm going to come out here, and just to be kind of equal to what I've got here, I'm going to say, come out two spaces, and then two more spaces, and then two more spaces, and I'm going to say this is minus 1, this is minus 2, and this is minus 3. And just do the opposite thing to the same value and the same spacing on the other side. Now, notice my spacing here is not perfect. That's okay. We're, this is a sketch. So there's my x values, and the first key is all the numbers that I've, the x values, the range here from minus 3 to 3 fits on my graph. And that's what he means when he says, uh, make sure you have room for all the points on your table. Uh, so now this other one goes from y is equal to minus 13, that's down here, and up to 5, and that's up here. So minus 13, well, let's say, um, what I might do is just let everything equals 2. Let's see if that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Well, not quite enough room. Well, maybe if I drew my line a little bit bigger. But what I'm going to do is just do something simple. So I'm going to say this is, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So this is minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, minus 10, minus 12, and minus 14. Now, it doesn't really matter what you choose because what you just want to look like is what we're looking for is the shape. Uh, so in the same way, we want to do the same exact thing up here. This is going to be 2 and 4 and 6. And notice our numbers only go to 5, so we don't care about anything else. Now what we do is we plot numbers. So I picked this first pair. There is a, uh, whoops, I just really messed that up, didn't I? There's a minus 3 and a minus 13. The more I draw on it, it doesn't really help it, does it? Minus 3, I come to the x is minus 3, and the y is minus 13. That's right there, so it's going to put me at that point right about there. And then the other one, I'm not going to draw on that one. How about that? There's a minus 2 and a minus 10. So I go over minus 2 on the x direction, this is the x direction, and down minus 10. And that's going to put this one right there. And then the other one is minus 1 and minus 7. So 7 is going to be between 6 and 8. That one's going to be there. And the other one's at 0. X is 0 and minus 4. And that one's right there. And uh, X is 1. And then it's minus 1. So that one's going to be right there. And you can already see these are going to form a line. Uh, even though my drawing and my sketch may not be perfect, it's forming a line. 2 and 2, so that point is right there, and then 3 is going to be 5, and that's going to be right there. Uh, and if I did this judiciously, and I'm going to use a straight line method here, um, that this should form a nice little line here. So as you see, if I draw a straight line, and the tool I'm using here draws a perfectly straight line, you can see it goes through all the points. So this, we see, is a uh, what he's asked us before. It forms a line that's all it's going in one direction and it's going up as, as I increase my X value and remember again I, I increase the number on my stove dial the hotter the temperature gets so if X is the value of my stove dial Y might be the temperature inside the oven so that's what we're doing and that's the relationship we're plotting most of the problems in this particular section are very similar to what we've done here just very to, with different equations